Now, you know, I just did my review of the Asus ROG Zephyrus G14, one of my favorite laptops of 2024. It's got a stepped up redesign here for 2024, a gorgeous OLED display, variable refresh rate, 120 hertz. You name it, it's got it, G-Sync support, it's got all of it. Uh, really great overall laptop. You can use it for pretty much anything you throw at it to take with you on the go. Well, I have its bigger sibling here in the studio. I've been putting it through its paces for the last couple of weeks. It's the Asus ROG Zephyrus G16 that brings a number of great improvements as well. A gorgeous, absolutely stunning OLED display, 16 inches, 240 hertz refresh rate. Yes, you heard that right. It's also got G-Sync support. It's also got the RTX 4090, although you can get it in other variations. This is what my review unit has. And it also has the Core Ultra 9, the 185H, which I got my first look at here. So I was really impressed with that performance as well. Overall efficiency is looking okay. We'll talk about that as well. So let's see if all these new changes for 2024 makes this a laptop you wanna check out here for 2024. Hey everybody, it's Andrew, and this is the Asus ROG Zephyrus G16, brand new, redesigned for 2024. Coming up. Now, before we get to the unit itself, I just want to let everyone know in the interest of transparency and full disclosure, I'm not being paid by Asus. I'm not being sponsored by Asus. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Asus is not getting copy approval. That means they're seeing this video for the first time, just like you. Now, this unit is on loan from Asus, and once this review is done, I'll be sending it back. Now, pricing for the ROG Zephyrus G16 here for 2024 starts at $19.99.99. Best Buy has a model there. That's the one you see on your screen right now. That gives you the RTX 4070, 16 gigabytes of RAM. And then, of course, you could step it up to the 4080 with 32 gigabytes of RAM. Both units, of course, come with the Core Ultra 9. I have the one with the 4090. That's the most high end. And, of course, we're going to look at that today. For those interested, I will leave links in the description below for more information and where you can buy one. You know the drill, folks. Let's get this out of the box. Okay, let's check out the power adapter right off the bat. It looks uh, pretty uh, substantial here. It's a 240-watt Power adapter uses the proprietary connection. We saw that on the G14, we're seeing it here. And then of course you get your power cord right there. So that is the power brick. And then of course we get the unit itself. Okay, we'll get to the unit in a moment as we have the gray version. Also comes in a platinum white. Some warranty information, safety information, product information, some setup guide here. Pretty typical paperwork. Wow, she is pretty gorgeous here. Pretty nice all metal design, you can see it here. It's that gray finish, okay, that's pretty nice. Okay, let's see if we can open this with one finger. Yep, we can. There's no problem doing that. And pretty nice looking device. You can see it here. Premium all metal design, a step up over the previous iteration, that's for sure. You can see a little bit of screen wobble here. That's one thing I noticed. The hinges feel good, although I'd like to see it a little bit tighter here. It'll get us a little bit more rigid so it doesn't move as much, say when you're typing and so forth. All right, let's give a listen to the keyboard. Keyboard and touchpad feel good. All right. There's your power button. No longer is there a fingerprint scanner, so you have to rely on Windows Hello for this. Uh, you've got your top row buttons here. You've got the 
volume up and down. You've got mute button. You've got the armory crate button that accesses the settings of this laptop. And that is certainly will be very handy. We'll talk about that very soon. And then, of course, you've got your layout here as the keyboard. Again, same font as we saw on the G14. A little cartoony for my liking, but some people like it. But this is a very premium stepped up design here by Asus here for 2024. There is no doubt about it. All right, let's check out the port selection. On the left side is that proprietary power port. You've got an HDMI 2.1 port. You've got a Thunderbolt 4 port, USB Type-C, that should be full function. We'll test all that out. USB Type-A, gotta love the legacy ports. And a 3.5 millimeter microphone headphone combo jack to round out the left side. Moving over to the right side is a full-size SD card reader, a very welcome sight, especially for a content creator. A USB Type-A, the second one on this device, we like that. And another USB Type-C, but that is the ports on this unit. I would say all in all, a good port selection, or I like the fact that those USB Type-C ports are split up, one on each side. That's a very nice layout here indeed. Okay, let's get a measurement of the weight. With the unit alone, 1.914 kilograms, and that is four pounds, 3.5 ounces. And with the power cord and the power charger, 2.621 kilograms, and that is five pounds, 12.4 ounces all in. It's a little bit of heft, but you got to pack a lot of punch here under the hood, so that will add some weight to the bag here. Okay, we have the G14 here, we have the G16 here, both have the slash lighting. Of course, that's a lot better than the Animatrix lid, which is a little bit more gaudy over the top. This is a little bit more understated. Now, as far as the size difference, as you can see, the G14 is a lot smaller in terms of that foot pin in front of the 16 here, the G16, of course. And as far as the thickness is concerned, you can see the G16, a little bit thicker, looks like, just from the eyeball test here, than the G14, not too unexpected there. We're seeing very little flex in the chassis here, very little give. So build quality seems to be rock solid. Now screen flex, you can see very minimal here. Pretty nice, although I am noticing this screen wobble here. Not fan of screen wobble. The hinges seem pretty nice here. And it goes back as far as you see here, but I think I'm seeing a little too much screen wobble for my liking. So just one thing, but the build quality seems really good. And I'm seeing very little, if any, give in the keyboard deck. No flex there. Very rock solid build quality. Just a little bit of screen wobble there that I'm not crazy about. Now, depending on your model, you'll either get vapor chamber cooling or a third fan. So the RTX 4060 or 4070 models do not have a vapor chamber cooling, but they do get the third fan. And then, of course, the RTX 4080 or 4090 does have the vapor chamber cooling and, and no third fan there. So just for those wondering, that's the internal layout between the different models. Now, my review unit does have the RTX 4090 discrete GPU, so we do get the vapor chamber cooling, and we get two SSD slots here. As far as the SSDs are concerned, the two terabyte in my review unit certainly gets excellent reads and writes, certainly what we like to see here for 2024, and certainly fast enough for what this laptop needs to do. Now, as far as the RAM, it's running the faster 74 6700 megahertz RAM. There's 32 gigabytes of RAM in my review unit, and it is running in dual channel mode. Now, unfortunately, the RAM is soldered into the motherboard, not upgradable by the user. So make sure you check out with the model with enough RAM that will fit your needs. Now, when it comes to the wireless, we're looking at a Wi-Fi 6E Bluetooth 5.3 combo card. And the good news is it's working fine, both the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth, no issues on either front. But I would like to see Wi-Fi 7 right out of the gate here for 2024, making it more future-proof. But the good news is it's not soldered in like a lot of other laptops here. It is slotted in. You can swap it out down the road if you need be. But again, the Wi-Fi, the Bluetooth have been both working flawlessly so far. Okay, let's talk about the keyboard, and I actually like it. I liked it on the G14, and I like it here on this redesigned G16 for 2024. Tactility, feedback, and key travel overall has been very good. Typing out long documents, emails, and the like has been very comfortable. And as far as the backlight on it, you can change the lighting and all that stuff. You know, if you're into that, that's fine. Now, it does have those characters that I'm not crazy about. You know, it looks a little cartoony to me, but overall, the typing experience has been very good. It does have a very spacious glass touchpad. It's not a haptic touchpad. It's a physical touchpad that was very responsive when it comes to scrolling and doing all the gestures. It's a really nice implementation of the touchpad here in 2024. 
Now, the display for 2024 is a big step up over previous iterations, as far as I'm concerned. It's now moved to an OLED or OLED display. It's 16 inches, 2.5K resolution, 2560 by 1600. That means it has a 16 to 10 aspect ratio. It's Pantone calibrated. It's a Dolby Vision display. And I got to tell you, it's simply spectacular. You're looking at really deep black, super vibrant colors, really high contrast. All the hallmarks of an OLED display are here. Excellent coverage of the color gamut. Really great color accuracy here. This is excellent if you want to do video editing, color grading, Photoshop, Lightroom. All those tasks will be handled very well with this display. Certainly comes through here. Now, one thing you have to be careful of with an OLED display is screen flickering or PWM, and I detected it below 60% screen brightness, so just keep that in mind. But it wasn't much of an issue for me, at least, but some are sensitive to PWM, so just bear that in mind. Now, this is a 240 hertz OLED display. Yes, you heard that right. Very unusual, probably the first time we've ever seen 240 hertz OLED display in a laptop of this magnitude. Really great for smooth scrolling, great gameplay of of course, needless to say, and it really gives you that very fluid experience. This is a fantastic display. Kudos to Asus for implementing it here on the G16. Now, when it comes to screen brightness, Asus claims 400 nits in standard dynamic range, 500 nits in HDR. I actually measured 421 in terms of the nits in the standard dynamic range, and again, around 500 nits or so in HDR. So that's been working out really great. Watching Netflix, Amazon, YouTube in HDR really has been spectacular. Now, it is a glossy display, although not overly glossy. I didn't find a lot of glare or reflections to be an issue. Even outdoors, it was okay. So it just depends on your lighting conditions, but for the most part it has a pretty good anti-reflective coating on it so good job on that front so this is the camera on the asus rog zephyrus g16 here for 2024 redesigned in a lot of ways very good so far i really like it now this is a 1080p camera it's also an ir camera now, there's no longer a fingerprint scanner for logging in you'll use the ir camera for windows hello login it worked pretty well now it does have the ai effects or the studio effects the background blur the auto framing the eye contact it's all there we've seen it before a million times it works reasonably well here it also is a pretty decent camera to do your video conferencing on. What do you think about the video quality? What do you think about the audio quality? Let me know in the comments section below. So here's the auto framing. It should keep me in frame if I go off frame. Yep, there it goes. Ooh. <laughs> All right, that's the auto framing. And then you get eye contact. And then you get the background blur. Okay, that's standard blur. That's portrait blur. Okay, let's talk performance, and in the Geekbench 6.2.2 test, Asus versus the Dell here, the ROG Zephyrus G16 versus the XPS 16, we're looking at better single-core performance, we're looking at better multi-core, and we're looking at a better OpenCL or GPU performance, not a surprise. We're looking at the Intel Core Ultra 9 185H versus the review unit that I have from Dell, Intel Core Ultra 7 155H. I would note, though, Dell does offer the XPS 16 in a Core Ultra 9 process processor so i don't have that one but you can get it now as far as the cinebench 2024 better single core better multi-core and better gpu performance again not a surprise rtx 4090 with a higher tgp than the rtx 4070 with its 60 watts of total power so just keep that in mind now, when it comes to the 3D Mark scores, it beat out the XPS 16. Again, the 4090 versus the 4070 here. Better time spy, better fire strike. Not a surprise. And when you compare it to the MacBook Pro 16 with the M3 Max, which has 14 cores and a 40 core GPU, I say, what the hell, let's take a look at the differences here. Obviously, the single core is going to be better on the Mac as well as the multi-core and not quite as good on the OpenCL, of course, that's not optimized on the Mac, but the Metal GPU score is, but again, still better performance out of that RTX 4090 when it comes to graphics. And that's pretty much the result we're seeing in the Cinebench 2024, better single and multi-core performance on the MacBook Pro, whereas you're getting better GPU performance on the Zephyrus G16. 
Now, when it comes to video editing, I ran the Pugin Bench DaVinci Resolve benchmark that I've been using lately, and the G16 outperformed the XPS 16 in this benchmark when it comes to video editing. You're looking at an overall score of 2173 versus 1517, better 4K media score, better GPU effects score, and a better Fusion score. Overall, an excellent video editing laptop in addition to being a capable gaming laptop. And here's how it stacks up against others in this category. And this is certainly a very capable gaming laptop thanks to the Core Ultra 9, the RTX 4090. We certainly get very playable frame rates on some of the more popular titles, even Cyberpunk 2077. Good job in terms of gaming here. And when I ran the Time Spy stress test to see if this will thermal throttle under heavy load, it got a score of 94.8%, although it didn't pass, 97% of course is passing, it still exhibited very little thermal throttling. So I think they did for an overall good job in a thin and light chassis considering it is a gaming laptop. So it is pretty good in that regard. Now the surface temperatures, I noticed it get around 49 or 50 degrees Celsius above the keyboard, below the display where the heat dissipates. So that's normal, but where you place your fingers on the keyboard was not much of an issue. It stayed relatively cool. And I noticed a hot spot on the underside where you see it reaches around 57 degrees Celsius. So just be careful of there. That's near the vent. So it's sort of typical there. But again, the bottom of it, as far as the underside where the fans are in the middle, it could get a little bit warm, but nothing overly hot. Now in the performance or even the turbo mode, you will hear the fans under load when you're putting this under maximum load here, 54.8, 54.9 decibels around there, of course, is certainly noticeable when you're doing everyday tasks in the balance mode or whatever, the silent mode, it really wasn't much of an issue. But again, if you're going to be playing games, you will notice that fan noise, that's for sure. Now, when it comes to the battery, this has a 90 watt hour battery and it did okay. I would say this is pretty good for a gaming laptop. Of course, when you enable it at 60 Hertz, you're going to get six hours and 58 minutes that I saw on the modern office test. I got 11 hours and eight minutes on the video playback and a little bit over an hour when it comes to gaming. But when you put it to the 240 Hertz, that's the really smooth, very fluid experience, especially when you're gaming, you're going to see a lot less, or maybe I would say an hour less. I shouldn't say a lot less, five hours and 50 57 minutes modern office test, eight hours and 58 minutes on the video playback, and under an hour in the gaming test. So pretty consistent when you think about it, when a gaming and the 240 hertz enabled, it makes sense. But the overall takeaway is battery life is not too bad considering this is a gaming laptop first and foremost. Now the Asus ROG Zephyrus G16 here for 2024 sports six speakers here, and they are quite great here, people. They are excellent as far as the overall sound. They have Dolby Atmos to help with the spatial audio. It's competing on the level of a MacBook Pro. Now I don't have the 16 inch here, but I do have the 14 inch, which sounds excellent. I think one of the best in the business. It also has six speakers. Let's give them a listen. You tell me what you think in the comment section below, but I think Asus really stepped up their game when it comes to the audio in this line. Thank you. 
Let's wrap it all up. The new ROG Zephyrus G16 is an outstanding laptop here for 2024, whether it be for gaming, multimedia, or whatever you throw at it, this certainly can handle it. It's got a very high quality, sleek aluminum case here, a new design, stepped up design for 2024. Great OLED display, 240 hertz of fresh rate, G-Sync support. It's got excellent audio in terms of the speakers. It's got great input IO. It's got two SSD slots. You gotta love that. And it's got really great system performance now the negatives of course are if you go with the models that do not have the vapor chamber cooling it's got an annoying third fan that gets you a little bit annoying in terms of the fan noise but my unit thankfully has the vapor chamber which certainly limits that and then of course the ram is soldered on smaller configurations only come with 16 gigabytes of ram my unit has 32 and the limited maximum hdr brightness uh, maxes out of 500 nits i didn't see above that and there's no wi-fi 7 here making a little less future-proof, although it is slotted in that card, so you can change it out if you need to down the road. But the overall takeaway is the ROG Zephyrus G16 is an outstanding laptop, whether it be for gaming, productivity work, or any kind of video editing, or creative work, it can get the job done here. And I would not be embarrassed taking this to a boardroom meeting, into a cafe, or anywhere, because it doesn't have over-the-top lighting and all that stuff that gaming laptops are noteworthy to have. So, this is a great 16 inch laptop I have no hesitation recommending here for 2024. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and X, the platform formerly known as Twitter. Don't forget to check out my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew, and I'll see you in the next video.